Hey everyone, welcome to this week's pretty quick uh, Azure update. It's the 16th of May, so as you can see, not a huge number of updates this week. New videos this week, we dived into dev containers and then GitHub code spaces. So this is a way to run all of the different requirements you may have for developing applications, maybe even doing certain admin tasks in a container-based environment, either running locally with dev containers or running up in the cloud with GitHub code spaces. So it makes it much easier to contribute to projects to get up and running in a consistent manner without having to go and do a whole bunch of prereqs on your machine. And then a quick video on subnet peering, what it is, why you might use it, and some examples of exactly what it's doing. So on to what's new on the compute side, so Azure App Configuration now has a developer plan. So if we think about the whole point of Azure App Configuration is a centralized configuration store that is then used by your applications. So the developer plan, if we go and take a look, we can see the differences between it, but it sits between the free and the standard plan. And really the big deal here is that it's useful for those dev and testing scenarios because it costs a fraction of the standard tier. You can create as many stores as you need in any given region. Uh, it also supports private endpoints, but it does not have an SLA. So that's one of the important things as you consider the differences between um, the developer and for example, that standard offering. Uh, moving on. So App Service now has web job support for Linux. So previously the web jobs were only available as part of the Windows environment, but now I can use it with both my Linux code and Linux container based app services. And think of a web job as something that's running in the background, either all of the time continuously, it can be manually triggered or it can run on a schedule, i.e. based on some cron job. So it's very different from the regular web app, which is normally triggered by some kind of HTTP request. So I can use shell scripts within these and also whatever matches the runtime of the web app. So if it was a Python based application, well, I could use a Python script. If it's a Node.js app, well, I could run a JavaScript. So I can use both the shell scripts and whatever matches the runtime of the environment. On the networking side, so Azure Virtual Network Manager, remember that gives us the centralized huge scale for connectivity, for security rules, for, for routing. Well, now as part of those connected groups where I'm defining the connectivity via Azure Virtual Network Manager, now supports the high scale private endpoints. So that supports up to 20,000 private endpoints within that connected group. On the storage side, so Azure NetApp Files now supports a per account, so Azure NetApp Files account, Active Directory connection. So previously, this was a single Active Directory connection for every uh, subscription and region, but now it's gonna let me set at the account level, the Active Directory. So I use Active Directory for things like SMB volumes, if I want NFS 4.1 Kerberos, encrypted volumes, uh, and a number of other scenarios. So it's just going to make this easier. Now, if I have multiple ANF accounts, and I want to go and connect them to different Active Directory environments. Premium SSD V2 is now available in Japan West. Remember, the V2 is all about, yes, it's sub millisecond latency, but also the IOPS and the throughput can be set and dynamically set, so even while it's in use, separately from the capacity. On the database side, so the MongoDB Atlas now has a native Azure integration in preview. So this is a collaboration between Microsoft and MongoDB to provide an Azure integrated, fully managed document database with a native vector search set of capabilities. So I can provision this via the Azure portal, it's in the Azure Marketplace. It's going to be billed with my regular Azure invoice and it has Entra integrated single sign-on. And then miscellaneous. So Azure Extended Zones is now added Perth in preview. So remember, an Azure Extended Zone is a smaller footprint extension of Azure. It's typically put in certain metros, industry centers, or some specific jurisdiction where I need either a very low latency service or very strict data residency requirements. 
And so these extended zones, they're not the full Azure region, but they support things like virtual machines, containers, a lot of the storage services, some of the other Azure services. But again, it's really designed where, hey, I'm in that same city and I need a super low latency cloud service, or again, I need that super close data residentry boundary that the regular regions just don't provide. And that was it. Told you it was quick. As always, I hope that was useful. Till next update, take care.